The lithium space in North America is on a hot streak. In the past three weeks, GM invested $650 million for a stake in Lithium Americas, and LG Chem recently put in $75 million for a stake in Piedmont. American Lithium is advancing its TLC projects in Tonopa, Nevada. CEO is Simon Clark. Simon, welcome back to Kitco. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Simon, outline the company and what it's focused on. Maybe you can separate your company from the other company in the news, which is Lithium Americas. Yeah, so I, I mean, we're somewhat similar to Lithium Americas in that we have a, a large uh, asset in Nevada, a, a large project, uh, TLC, as you mentioned. And then we have a large hard rock lithium project in Peru called Falchani. Um, so again, South American assets and Nevada. Uh, we're, we're a couple of years behind them in terms of the development cycle, but moving along that cycle very quickly. And as you mentioned, you know, a big milestone for us was the PA that came out a couple of weeks ago. What were the highlights from the PA for the TLC? And again, that's for the Nevada project, correct, Simon? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, for us, what we really wanted to show is that using conventional tech techniques and best of breed equipment that we could, you know, recover uh, high purity lithium uh, on robust economics at TLC. And I think the uh, the report more than more than achieves that our operating costs came very much in line with uh, Lithium America's costs at Thacker Pass. Our capital costs um, on a per ton basis were certainly a good bit lower. And I think that demonstrates the uh, style of mineralization we have where it's actually, you, you know, simpler to extract the, 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 the lithium from the clay stone. Um, and, uh, you know, that obviously has an impact on the size of the equipment and, and the process as you move forward. So we were really pleased with it. It's, a, I think, a strong validation of the project moving forward. And we're moving quickly into pre-feasibility on the back of it. Now, it is a clay deposit. Uh, you're talking about TLC, but I was looking through your uh, corporate deck and then you say that uh, it's, um, how would you say, uh, the lithium is uh, not so tightly bound with the clay. So you're looking at a mineral process or getting to that battery grade. It's, uh, you see that um, it's uh, something that's achievable, Simon. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, for us, like, um, you know, like most of the projects in Nevada, we get it to a high purity technical grade, which um, you can then either convert into a battery grade or uh, a battery grade carbonate or a battery grade hydroxide. And again, that'll ultimately depend on, on what battery um, the end user is looking to use. Um, you know, lithium carbonate's typically used for shorter range LFP batteries with uh, hydroxides being used for the for the longer range batteries like NCM um, and, and, the, and those types of technologies. So, you know, for us at, uh, at TLC, we, we, we produce a high purity carbonate, again, which can then be converted into battery grade either on the carbonate side or the hydroxide side. So it gives good flexibility from that perspective. Uh, any updates uh, from what you're doing in Latin America, Simon? Yeah, so we, um, you know, we've we, we moved uh, Falchani into pre-feasibility last year, um, and we were able to get some good drilling done uh, prior to Christmas. Um, and as part of the move into feasibility, we're in the process of updating the the previous PEA that was done on the project, uh, updating the economics because. Um, Two or three years old, uh, the the lithium pricing, for example, was about twelve thousand a ton, um, and in our project at TLC, we used twenty thousand a ton, and indeed, Lithium Americas used twenty four thousand a ton. So, if we update the the the, the pricing for, for lithium carbonate in the in the model, the 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 economics get stronger still. Um, at the same time, we're going to update the opex and capex side, so they're very much in line with today's pricing is, as I'm sure you imagine, you know, two or three years time uh, lapse from the last PA, there's been a, a big increase in some of the input costs. But when you put it all in, um, we expect the economics to get even more robust at Falchani as well. Uh, 
congratulations on uh, the PA, but um, I kind of wanted to ask a broader question. If uh, somebody's coming to you and, um, you know, you were saying, uh, why would you tell them that uh, lithium mining is uh, so difficult and uh, why is it so costly? Uh, what's, what's, what's difficult about it? So, uh, I mean, I, I mean, mining is a, is a complex operation, whatever you're mining, just, to, just in general, you know, the, extracting minerals from the earth and then processing them. But lithium in particular is a, you know, is a complex mineral um, and, and, and uh, extracting it from whether it's from brines or hard rock or uh, as we're doing in Nevada from claystone, it's very much a, a, a chemical process um that involves a number of steps so you know it's it, it's certainly not for the faint-hearted um you, you know as as you develop the projects i think you know the the, the involvement of of uh, of of processes and uh, and flow sheets that uh, deal with all the various steps is is key so it's it, it's complicated uh, i mean clearly it's it's um it, it's doable i think techniques and Technologies are improving that are going to help uh, help help the recovery processes as we move forward. But um, it's definitely, to my mind, a a a, a sector where you need um, the the strategic help of some of the big players and uh, and also some of the bigger balance sheets as the as the projects move forward. Simon. Can you talk uh, about uh, some of the deals that uh, we've seen uh, with the uh, North American uh, uh, lithium, um, how would you say, lithium juniors uh, that are developing right now? Uh, we see that uh, there was that equity investments with LG and uh, GM. Uh, there's also offtakes. Um, what makes sense uh, for your company? You know, now that we really have shown a deep understanding of the mineralization at TLC um, and, and of been able to demonstrate the ability to extract lithium um, very economically. I think now it is the time to start to look at um, at, at some of those strategic uh, partnerships that could really help us drive the project ahead. You know, we're well capitalized at you know 41 million on the balance sheet, and and a lot of dilutives that are in the money. So we're not looking for straight equity, but I I think where um, where projects like ours can benefit is from the right strategic partner that ultimately has the bigger dollars that will help you uh, towards building a mine, and or the um, you know again the expertise in uh, on the chemical side in terms of extracting lithium. So, you know, I think for us we're you know we're very good at mining, we're very good at finding things, we're very good at delineating them, we're very good at developing them. But at some stage, I think, especially in a in a in a, in a critical mineral like lithium, the you know the expertise um, of some of the bigger players and some of the players that have been focused on this area becomes more important. So certainly now that we have this economic study out, um, and as we move things forward in Peru as well, I think bringing in the right partner to to help drive the project forward. In terms of understanding, but also in terms of capital, makes a lot of sense. And you know, again, uh, as part of that, we can we can look at offtake agreements. Uh, you, you know, before now, we, 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 our feeling was we wanted to really understand what product we would actually produce at Tonopah before locking into an offtake. You know, that uh, obviously binds you as you move forward. So. But as I say, the time is right now to have those discussions. Uh, the PA has has been very well received and uh, and and really shows the potential of this asset. Do you see automakers or the companies that rely on batteries uh, becoming miners, Simon? I, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure they actually physically become miners, but I think you're going to see a lot more of what you saw at a GM. Um, you, you know, I mean, as we've as we've seen, uh, you know, the the need for domestic lithium is, is, uh, and other critical minerals has has become, you know, more and more pressing. Um, and you know, I I think you're seeing with the automakers and the, you know, the other end users and the cathode plants and uh, and and uh, storage um, users that they're not going to hang around and uh, and necessarily wait for policymakers to to really help drive the growth of lithium because 
they've bet the farm on uh, on lithium ion and you know gm for example is is moving forward to a fully um a battery focused uh, vehicle fleet and with that you know they're going to have to make sure that they secure the supplies of these critical minerals so they're not going to take the risk of not being able to secure lithium cobalt you know graphite manganese whatever piece of the chain they need and i think that's why you're starting to see these these investments coming through and i would expect that to accelerate and more of those kind of deals to come through you say that uh, you expect uh, more of these types of deals to come through and then uh, going back to uh, the summer of 2022 there was the inflation reduction act and uh, that's been uh, funding a lot of uh, downstream operations we see piedmont uh, we see Jevois, for instance uh, some of the uh, some of the companies that have benefited from this uh, in another interview though simon uh, you said uh, that the chinese have played their hands well in the lithium space and why <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny, I had, uh, uh, you know, I think some people like that comment, some, some weren't so sure, but, but, what, but what I mean is the Chinese recognized early on that the, the need for critical minerals, um, you know, in, in their industries and as they, as, as they drive their, their economy forward, is paramount. And so, you know, for 20, 30 years, they've been securing assets across Africa, and now we're seeing it across South America, and making sure that they have their supply chains in place so they can supply what is a, a, a massive growth area. Um, and, you know, they've obviously got all the refining capacity and upgrading capacity in China itself. So they've got the whole supply chain set up to support their growth. In the West, we don't. And I mean, if we think we're going to get anywhere net, near net zero, um, you, you know, by 2050, uh, or, or even meet some of the targets that we believe are coming on the, you know, the growth curve for for EVs and storage and uh, and and other key elements of, you know, the the new economy, if you like, um, we've got to secure not only domestic sources of lithium, but sources of lithium with those countries that we've typically allied with and you know i put peru right up there it's a uh, strong relationships with the uh, with the us and canada historically it's got a great mining code a great mining sector and you know you, you are seeing the chinese become more and more um present in 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 uh, in, in peru as they have across um south america so i think they've they've understood the need way before we have and i think they've taken steps to do it and you know we've really got to start to move forward on our side to to help redress the balance and make sure that our industry is not dependent on um, external powers that may not have our best interests at heart lastly simon milestones at american lithium over the next 12 months yeah so as i mentioned we're now very quickly moving um uh tlc into the pre-feasibility phase so you'll see us um you know start to do more pilot work start to do more work on the process side of things to really embed um you know the process that we've outlined in the pea uh, for in peru you, you you will see us um really driving forward on that pa as well that'll involve an updated sorry on the pre-fees there which will in involve updating the pa as well so we will redo the economics. You'll see a, a, a up-to-date economic analysis, which I think will show a significantly higher uh, NPV, net asset value. Um, and you know, we will in, we, we will expand the resource at Falchani. We will expand the flow sheet to bring in some really significant byproducts. I think in the past we've talked about SOP on the potash side and and also cesium. And we are also going to be doing some drilling uh, in and around Falchani, not only to expand that uh, that resource, but also to uh, to discover new deposits, which we are pretty certain there are across the the plateau there. And then and then finally, as we've already announced, you will see us spin out the uranium asset into its own vehicle over the coming months. It's a it's a wonderful asset. It's a but it gets lost within a lithium developer, and we think it will really generate some good value for our shareholders if we put it in its own vehicle and uh, and spin out the share to uh, to our shareholders of record so 
lots of uh, upcoming news. It's a, it's a busy time, um, but, uh, you know, an exciting time as well. Simon, thanks for making the time. No problem. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here again. He's Simon Clark. He's CEO of American Lithium. My name's Michael McRae, and you're watching Hickle Month.